Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In this lecture, today we will discuss about multi criteria decision making for natural resources management. And if you recall that uh, we have already discussed about the you know introductions of MCDM that we call you know in brief MCDM. So, for natural resources management we also discussed in the introductory lecture or MCDA that how actually it works, what are the different you know aspect of that. We talked about different processes methods like AHP, we have talked about analytical hierarchical you know process. So, so these are the things we have already discussed. Today in this part uh, 1 of MCDM on natural resource management, we will be discussing little bit in detail that how particularly NCDM actually work. If you recall that we have seen in the introductory lecture of MCDM that is it uses the mathematical principles for finding out the best possible alternative for a criteria. right? So, if you recall that we discussed about criteria 1, 2, 3 and then suppose we have alternative A 1 to a n for each you know options like this right. Now, this one will try from all options a to n and then c 1 also will go you know alternative 1, alternative 2, alternative 3 like that up to n. Similar is for c 2. So, it will try for alternative 1, alternative 2, alternative 3 to alternative n. Now, MCDA help us in finding out the best possible combinations for better decision making for natural resources management. There are many other applications are also there in this course, I would like to limit to natural resource management. Now, if you see that we already discussed that MCDM is a process which helps in decision makers to you know choose suitable alternative based on different criteria like as I said C 1 to C n any number of criteria. Criteria may be quantitative or qualitative or both. Therefore, there are different approaches that we you know use under MCDA. We will discuss about that already earlier lectures you know talked about all those different methodology. Now, this process you know MCDA generally involved with selection, assign and appropriate weight that we give to each of these criteria and then finally, give some weighted scores values to the alternatives based upon you know the criteria. This we have discussed in the introductory lecture. Now, criteria you know might include also several sub criteria. In the case of suppose assigning weightage when you put to each of the criteria, the weightage of the sub criteria should also be assigned or determined. If you recall that we discussed about this also in the introductory lecture on MCDM. Now, WSM weighted sum you know product model, weighted sum method or weighted sum product model, how actually it works? WSM is a very simple and most common process to determine the weighted score of the alternatives. So, we largely use similar you know linear combinations of the weight and the values of the various criteria. The weight that we give it may be 
equal or unequal depending upon the purpose of the MCDM that you are actually trying to use for. What is the formula that we use for WSM or WPM? Very simple, SAI is a function summation of j i j 1 to n w j into x i j. Now, what are these? x i j is the normalized criteria values of the alternatives. Okay? So, example as I said i is equal to 1 to n. Okay? So, s a 1 you will have w 1 x suppose 1 and i x i 1 j also 1 then you have 2, then you have x i 1, but for j you have 2. So, like that way it will continue up to n. Similar way you will try for s a 2 to s a n, all alternative that you will try to test. Now, s i is the weighted sum score of ith alternative, it could be the first or the second or the third if i value is 1, then it is the first, if i is equal to 2, then it is the second, if i is equal to 3, then it is so and so forth. In many cases, the weighted average score is taken instead of the weighted sum. I repeat once again, in many cases, the weighted average, the mean score is taken instead of the weighted sum. All right? So, this is one simple simplest you know method of MCDM which is known as WSM or WPM. Now, weighted product model WPM, weighted product model is another combination of the weight and the values of the criteria for scoring the rank of the alternatives, means which of the alternatives highest rank then order. Of course, when you decide take a decision you will go for the highest rank alternative. right? So, how you do that? The equation P A I where j value is 1 to n and then you have x i j into w j. x i j to the power w j, here x i j is the normalized criteria values of the alternatives same as w s m. Okay? P A I, P A I is the weighted product score of ith alternative, weighted product score. Here it was weighted sum score in WSM. In case of weighted product model, it is the weighted product score means multiplying. All right. So see here you are actually summing it up. Okay. Here you are multiplying. This is the difference. Now for alternative A1, if i is equal to one, so alternative A1 you get x i j both one w also to the power w j is equal to 1. Then for ith alternative j th option you are getting this and then onward it will be like that. Okay? In case of maximum minimum normalization of the variables which are criteria here where x equivalent to you know it can take value 0 or 1, there in case of the lower limit of x that is 0, the entire weighted product also will be 0. right? If your any x value is 0, then all the product, entire product will be 0. This is one of the major limitation of WPM. Okay? So, if in some cases we are not able to use WPM, the major reason is this limitation because if your minimum value of x becomes 0, then everything becomes 0. Next method, weighted aggregated sub product assessment, which you call WASPAS. WASPAS is a weighted combination of the weighted sum method and weighted product method. Okay? Combination of these two, which processes to determine the weighted score of the alternatives, utilizing both summation and multiplication. Okay? That means WSM and WPM method. How? This is the formula R i is equal to W S i plus 1 minus W into P A i, where W score lies between 1 and 0. Okay? Now, suppose you put value j equals to 1 to n, then how it goes? 
So, in one value if you say for i is equal to 1. So, for this value it will be like w and then you will go w here will be 1. Okay. So, here w j for j is equal to 1. So, w j will be 1 x i and j also will be 1. So, usually waspas w is taken as 0 0.5, but it depends upon the problem and the desired outcome. Okay. So, the best r i value under waspas method when it is 0 0.5 that is what actually we consider as one of the best you know selections for alternatives all right so this methodology applies your wsm and wpm as you see that plus as well as also your multiplication okay both so wsm and wpm both way are utilized now normalization method of criteria values of the alternatives how you you know uh, normalize the criteria value of each one of your alternatives. It is largely done just to remove you know the mismatch and so that all the variables come under a similar scale okay? that is the purpose. Normalization also depends upon the beneficial and non-beneficial you know criteria. Several normalization methods we use probably all of you are using it. So, few of the widely used methods are you know like in case of beneficial criteria you use this formula, in case of non-beneficial criteria you use this formula. Okay. So, for beneficial criteria higher values are desired, for non-beneficial criteria lower values are desired naturally. Okay. So, maximum normalization you see for beneficial criteria this is the formula for non beneficial this is the formula. So, here you will take the lowest value as low as means lower value means better and here if it is higher it is better because in the positive or beneficial side. Okay. Some normalization is another method where you you know add up your value to calculate beneficial criteria under some normalization this is the formula and for non-beneficial criteria this is the formula. So, if you wish you can you know note down this formula otherwise anyway this transcript of these lectures also will be provided to you. Vector normalization for beneficial this formula we use for non-beneficial we use this formula. Now, vector normalization method are often used also for another MCDM technique topsis you recall that we discussed in the first lecture of MCDA about various methods. So, topsis is uh, another method of MCDA where vector normalization can be used. Log normalization this uh, done by simply taking the log values of the variables. You have all the alternatives uh, right. So, these values whatever values you have those values actually will take log of those values. Okay log of those values. So, you know this particular normalization methodology log normalization is difficult in case you know if there is uh, 0 values or fractions like uh, you remember that in case of you know weighted product model there is chance that you can get the x lower limit as low as 0. So, in that case you might find difficulty. So, how you calculate beneficial how you normalize you know using log normalization process for beneficial criteria this is the formula for non beneficial this is the formula. Okay. So, it looks uh, complicated, but when you get the value of each one of them suppose i j when you get the value then actually it becomes much much easier to calculate. Just let me try to explain these things with an example. Suppose in an agriculture experiment six different precision farming technologies are adopted. Four different criteria are enlisted C1, C2, C3, C4 different four criteria enlisted. Now, based on those criteria, let us determine which technology is most suitable for, for any given area. This is a very common question right. 
most of the time any of us face which one three four uh, technologies are there say i had given if you recall the example of irrigation you have suppose drip irrigation surface groundwater which one in which area is suitable this is the way you can actually find out the answer now you have suppose six technology okay now there are two type of criteria non beneficial and beneficial now what are requirement in case of non beneficial we discussed as lower the value better for us so you see that water requirement 621 440 604534475680 which one is the lowest this one which is the technology b cost of cultivation this one if you see see which one which one this one is the lowest okay yield beneficial higher is better so here we have the highest here water use efficiency higher is the better here you have the highest where here now you see that for any single technologies which one having better benefit for us here you have one water requirement less yield high looks like a good option right so water requirement is less yield high but of course here cultivation cost is relatively higher but at the same time you have to see that water is a very important natural resource again it comes the giving some value to our natural resources if you feel that water is just free then it is different okay so this is one combination that we have let's see now here a b c d e f are the alternatives as you saw and c1 c2 c3 and c4 are the criteria all right four different criteria like water requirement cost of cultivation yield and water use efficiency okay so c1 c2 c3 c4 four criteria now c1 c2 are non beneficial right and c3 and c4 are beneficial okay now you see in case of c1 maximum is this minimum is this value c2 maximum is this minimum is this for c3 maximum minimum maximum minimum now we know that we have to do a normalization so maximum minimum normalization process can be applied here now then you calculate use this formula remember the normalization process we talked about so here maximum minimum normalization this is the one we can use because we have very clear cut maximum and minimum values of the different criteria now here we calculate we find that for beneficial criteria our you know maximum minimum normalization value is 0.38 whereas for non beneficial it is 0.26 is this is the value okay so this is the normalized decision variable matrix you can say for c1 c2 c3 c4 for all now for c1 this is the value lowest for c3 this is the value or you can say normalize you know value now on this basis you will go for now a weighted sum model now normalized decision variable matrix you have this with you we calculate 0.26 0.38 as the normalized value so here now we will go for where w is the weight associated with each criteria say equal weight is assumed for each criteria that is 0.25 each now you try to apply the model so row 1 that is for alternative a1 all the criteria so you have 0.26 you are giving weightage 0.25 then you have c2 you are giving weightage again 0.25 then you have c3 you are giving weightage 0.25 then you have c4 you are again giving 0.25 how much is the value is coming wsm 0.46 so your alternative a for all criteria value is 0.46 similar way you will try for alternative b c d e f then you get actually all the value now you see the ranking so your alternative d becomes first ranker and the one that you have calculated for a it becomes rank 4 so this way 
you can clearly see that out of your all alternatives which one is the best one that you should go for. Is not it is a good idea or easy way to solve a complex situation of choosing an alternative, especially when you have alternative options more than one. All right. So, we continue with the now WSM. So, W is the weight associated with the each criteria. Suppose, if we give you know give the weight which are different weight unequal weight previous one we have given 0.25 to all as you saw that we multiply with 0.25. But here if we give four different type of you know weight to four different criteria then how it happens. So, we have this value for alternative A. Now, let us see how it goes. Okay. So, C 1, C 1 we have given 0 0.5, C 2, 0 0.8, C 3, 0 0.05, C 4 we have given 0 0.1. Now, we get the WSM value 0 0.87. So, we put it here for against alternative A. Now, that is the way we calculate all others and we find 0 0.87 is the highest value. So, it goes as a rank 1. So, this is when our weightage to each criteria C 1, C 2, C 3, C 4 given 4 different weightage. Previous one we tried with single weightage of 0.25, but in real situation it always may not happen. You may have 4 different or 3 different like that kind of you know weightage value. So, like that you can also calculate now, you can also see that how WPM the product model can work. Suppose, if we try same way giving weightage same weightage 0.25 to all, then how it happens? Here is all your alternative, then you actually try like 0.26 that is C 1, C 1 to the power 0.25, C 2, C 3, C 4. So, then what you get? You ultimately get a value of 0.33. So, that is your value for A. Now, calculate all others. Okay. You see here if your criteria is 0 remember I said that in product model we have limitation you will get 0 values right? and that is why sometime we do not use it. So, here you find that your rank number 1 is alternative D. So, this is the way you can calculate. If you have unequal values weightage for your all different criteria then you get like this C 1 0.05 suppose C 2 have given 0.8, C 3 have given 0 0.5, 0 0.05 and then again C 4 you have given 0 0.1. Four different weightage you get 0.77 as your WPM value. You write it here, calculate all others, you find that A is the highest. So, rank number 1. So, you go for alternative 1 when you use the methodology WPM. But remember this is your one limitation. WASPAS is another uh, methodology where you can try as similar way giving same weightage to all criteria and different weightage to different criteria and then you try to calculate uh, values for equal weight and unequal weight. Here you get 0.4, here you get 0.82. Okay? So, that is the way that uh, you know we could basically calculate you can analyze the alternatives and you can choose which alternatives actually is the best one out of the 4 or 5 options that you have. In the field it helps really a great way to decide which methodology, which alternative people will go for. It could be irrigation choices, it could be you know uh, fertilization choices, it could be also for any other, any other kind of activity related to agriculture or non-agriculture also. Basically, these methodologies actually simplifies your decision making process. That is why we call multiple criteria decision making or methodology. Mm -hmm.